Hello. Hello. I'm David Clark. I'm Linda Rivera. Are you a teacher? No, I'm not. Oh, are you a student? Yes, I am. Are you from the United States? No, I'm not. Where are you from? I'm from Canada. Hello, Kenji. Hi, John. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? Fine, thanks. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes? Are you American? Pardon me? Are you from the United States? Yes, we are. Oh, I'm American too. Are you here on vacation? No, we aren't. We're here on business. Please sit down. Thank you. Coffee? Yes, please. Cream? No, thanks. Sugar? Yes, please. Where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. Are you here on business? No, I'm not. I'm on vacation. What is it? What is it? Is it a fly? No, it isn't. Is it a mosquito? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Oh, no. It isn't a mosquito, Mike. It's a bee. What's your name? Good evening. Good evening, sir. What's your name? Stern. My name's Thomas Stern. Oh, yes, Mr. Stern. Room 15. Here's your key. Thank you. You're welcome. Is this your suitcase? No, it isn't. Oh, is that your suitcase over there? Yes, it is. Good evening. Good evening. What are your names, please? Johnson. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Oh, yes. Here's your key. Are these your suitcases here? No, they aren't. Oh, I'm sorry. Are those your suitcases over there? Yes, they are. Is this our room? What's the number? Fourteen. Oh, no. No, it isn't. That's our room. Number thirteen. I'm cold. No. <laughs> Are you cold? Yes, I am. Well, I'm not. I'm hot. It's late. The plane's late. Yes, it's very late. Are they tired? No, they aren't tired. He's hungry and she's thirsty. They're tired. Yes, they are. This is terrible. I'm very angry. I'm sorry, ma'am. Is that book good? Yes, it is. But it's very sad. Phew. I'm hot. Yes, that coat's very warm. There's a nice apartment. This is a nice apartment, Ms. Garcia. Look, here's a floor plan. Hmm. There's a living room, there's a kitchen, a bedroom, and a bathroom. Is there a balcony? Yes, there is. And a dining room? Is there a dining room? No, there isn't a dining room, but there is a dining area in the living room. Well, this is the kitchen. Oh, it's very small. Yes, it isn't very large, but there's a stove, a refrigerator, and a space for a dishwasher. There are some cabinets, and, um, there's a small shelf under the sink. Are there any windows in the bathroom? No, there aren't, but there are two large windows in the bedroom. Good. It's a very nice apartment. Um, uh, where is the bathroom? Requests. Hi. A cola, please. Regular or large? Regular, please. There you go. Thanks. How much is that? A dollar fifteen. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you pass the salt, please? Sure. Here you are. Thanks. And the pepper? 
No thanks. Could I have your phone number? It's in the phone book. What's your last name? It's in the book too. Very funny. Okay, it's 639-7701. Uniforms. How do you do? My name's Tiffany Gonzalez, and I'm a flight attendant for Air USA. This is my uniform, a blue skirt, a pink blouse, and a black jacket. It's very stylish. Carlos de Silva is a soccer player for Brazil. His shirt is yellow and green, and his shorts are blue and white. Hi there, I'm Brian. And I'm Diane. We're lifeguards at Bay Beach. Our uniforms aren't very stylish. White shorts, orange t-shirts, and green caps. Adriana Papadopoulos is a firefighter in a small town in Kansas. Her jacket is red, her hat is brown, her pants are gray, and her boots are yellow. Brandon Timmons and Jason Davis are baseball players for the Bayport Seagulls. Their pants are white, and their shirts are black and orange. Whose is it? Hi there, Erica. Hello, Dan. Wow! What's that? It's a 1936 cord. It's beautiful. Is it your car? No. No, it isn't. Whose car is it? It's Jessica Montana's car. Jessica Montana? Who's she? She's my boss. There's some oil in the bottle. Kelly, where's the oil? What? Where's the oil? There isn't any oil in the cabinet. There's some oil right there, in the bottle on the shelf. Oh, okay. Sorry. Are there any onions? Sure. Where are they? They're right here. There's some on the table. An American restaurant. Waiter, I'd like the menu, please. There you go, sir. Thanks. I'd like some soup. Tomato soup? Yes, and I'd like a steak. Rare, medium, or well done? Medium, please. Which vegetables would you like? I'd like some potatoes, some peas, oh, and a green salad. Certainly, sir. Would you like dressing on your salad? Please. Which salad dressing would you like, sir? French, Italian, Thousand Island, oil and vinegar? Oil and vinegar, please. Computer game. Okay, that's you on the first level. Go right. Be careful. Don't touch the bomb. Stop. Jump. That's right. Now, go up the ladder. Go right. Quick. Don't open the door. Go left. Jump. Be very careful. Jump again. Don't touch the soldiers. Go up the ladder. Don't go left. Go right. Jump. Don't go up the ladder. Jump again. Get Maria and Marco. Press jump twice. Okay, now go back. Jump. Go up the ladder. Go right. Go left. Jump fast. Go up the ladder and save the princess. Press jump twice. Now go down the ladder and go left. That's the gold. Press jump twice. Okay, that's level one. Good. Listen to me, Robbie. Turn the vacuum cleaner off. That's right. Now turn the TV on. This is the news. That's great. Now turn the TV off. Go to the door. Open it. Fantastic. Come here. Give me the newspaper. Thank you. Go to the windows. Close them. Now go to the door. Go out, walk to the front door, open it. Go out and... Goodbye. Robbie? Robbie! Come back here! Robbie! Where are you? Robbie! Who is happy? Look at this woman. Her name's Donna Walton. These are her three children, Jane, Daryl, and Michelle. Donna's an English teacher. She's not rich. And she's not famous. Look at her house. It's small and there's no pool. There are three bedrooms in the house. Donna's car is old. It's slow and uncomfortable. 
There's no radio or cassette player in her car. There's an engine, a steering wheel, and there are four wheels and two doors. Donna isn't happy. She'd like a big house, a new car, and a lot of money. Look at this man. His name's Zach Zebedee. He's a rock star. He's very rich and famous. Look at his house. It's large and expensive, and there's a swimming pool in the backyard. There are ten bedrooms in the house. Zach's car is new. It's a white Lincoln stretch limo. It's fast and comfortable. In his car, there's a climate control system, a CD player, a VCR, a phone, and a fax machine. But Zach isn't happy. He'd like a small house, a small car, and a family with two kids. My dad can do everything. My dad's really wonderful. He's big and strong and handsome. Really? Well, my dad can do everything. Can he? What? He's really smart. He can speak a hundred languages. A hundred? What languages can he speak? Well, he can speak Spanish, Italian, French, German, Japanese, Arabic, and uh, a lot more. Well, my dad's very athletic. Athletic? Uh-huh. He can swim, ski, and play football, tennis, and baseball. Oh, well, can your dad cook? Cook? No, he can't. My dad is a wonderful cook. Really? Yes, and he can paint and play the piano, too. Oh, my dad can't do that, but my mom is beautiful and smart, and she can... Choices. Please, come in. Thank you. Sit down. Thanks. Would you like tea or coffee? A cup of coffee, please. Uh, how about a cookie? No, thanks. I'm on a diet. Excuse me. Yes, can I help you? I'd like a pair of shoes, please. What color would you like? Brown. What size are you? Seven. Can I try them on? Sure. Hi. A frozen yogurt, please. What flavor? Strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla? Strawberry, please. In a sugar cone or in a cup? In a cup, please. There you go. That's $1.95. What do they have? Hi there, fans. My name's Courtney Dallas. I'm a famous actress, a superstar. I'm from Los Angeles. I have an apartment in New York and a house in Hollywood with a swimming pool and a tennis court. I have a new Mercedes and a lot of money in the bank. I'm married and I have three wonderful children. I have everything. Life's great. Hello. My name's Ike Proudfoot. I'm from Alaska. I have a small cabin in the woods. I don't have a car, a TV, a radio, or a phone. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. And I don't have a family. I don't have anything. But life's fantastic out here. Hello there. Our names are Tina and Chuck Jackson. We're from Chicago. I'm a nurse, and Chuck has a job in a factory. We don't have a big house, but we have a nice apartment. We have two cars. I have a new Honda. Chuck doesn't have a new car. He has an old Chevrolet. It's beautiful. And we have two great kids. Life's good. At Customs. Good morning. May I see your passport? Sure. Here it is. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. Do you have anything to declare? No, I don't. You have six suitcases, is that right? Yes, that's right. What do you have in your cases? Clothes. And I have some compact discs and some perfume. How much perfume do you have? One bottle. Okay, and how many CDs do you have? Um, three. Fine. Do you have anything else? No, I don't. Good. Now, open the suitcase, please. Huh? What? Open your suitcase. Now, let's see. Well, look at this. You have three portable CD players, five, no, six large bottles of perfume, and a lot of CDs. Which one? Hi, George. It's a great party. Thank you. How about some more salad? Thanks. Which plate is yours? That one's mine. Which one? The empty one. Charles and Lucy would like some more coffee. Okay. Which mugs are theirs? Uh, the blue one's his, and the white one's hers. Are you sure? Um, I don't know. George! Give them fresh mugs. There are some on the shelf. Good night, and thanks for a lovely evening. 
Now, which coats are yours? Those coats are ours. Which ones? The black one and the gray one. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks. The gray one's mine and the black one's hers. Travel. Excuse me. May I help you? I'd like some information about the trains. Where to? Montreal. When? Tomorrow. Morning or afternoon? Evening. Around 6 o'clock. Okay. There's one at 6.40. Thanks. Excuse me, is the seat taken? No, it isn't. Is it okay if I sit here? Yes, of course. Is that your newspaper? Yes, it is. May I borrow it for a minute? Yes, sure. Good morning. May I see your ticket, please? Yes, here it is. Okay. Do you have any luggage? Yes, one suitcase. Put it right here. Can I carry it on the plane with me? It isn't heavy. No, I'm sorry. It's the wrong size. What are they doing? Hello? Hello, Laura? Is Scott there? Oh, hi, Jamie. Yes, he is, but he's busy. Is he working? No, he isn't working. He's in the kitchen. What's he doing? He's cooking. What are you doing? I'm reading. Can you help me? Carlos is a student. He's staying with the Flynn's, a family in Boston. Mrs. Flynn, can you help me? I'm doing my homework, and I can't understand this word. Which one? Oh, that's difficult. I'm sorry, Carlos. I can't help you now. I'm watching TV. I can help you later. Oh, what are you watching? I'm watching an old western with Clint Eastwood. Can Mr. Flynn help me? Well, no, he can't. Not now. He's reading. What's he reading? He's reading a magazine. What about Kate? Oh, she can't help you now. She's talking on the phone. Who's she talking to? I don't know. You're asking a lot of questions tonight, Carlos. Yes, I know. I'm practicing my English. Shopping. Can I help you? Pardon me? Can I help you? Oh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Can you show me some cameras, please? Sure. What make do you want? I'd like a Minolta. This one's very good. It's a new model. How much is it? $180. Oh, that's too expensive. How much can you spend? Around $100. Here's one at $99.50. Great. Can you show it to me? Good morning. Good morning. How may I help you? I'm looking for a textbook. What's the title? Instant English. Do you have it? Yes, it's over here. How much is it? Twelve dollars. May I see it, please? Sure. There you go. Thank you. Your English is very good. Are you studying it? No, I'm teaching it. The Fashion Show And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Julia. Julia's wearing a white silk blouse and a black skirt. It's made of wool. She's wearing tan shoes, and she's carrying a tan leather bag with a gold chain. Thank you, Julia. Now, here's Wayne. He's wearing dark blue wool pants and a light blue wool sport coat. He's wearing a yellow cotton shirt and a red and yellow striped silk tie. Thank you, Wayne. Going to the movies. Victor is standing outside the movie theater. He's waiting for his friend Tanya. He's looking at his watch because she's late. An old man's coming out of the theater. A young woman's going into the theater. A boy's running up the steps. A woman's buying a ticket from the cashier. Some people are standing in line outside the movie theater. Now Victor's in the theater with Tanya. He's sitting between Tanya and a man with a mustache. A woman sitting in front of him. Victor can't see the movie because she's wearing a hat. A man sitting behind Tanya. He's eating potato chips. Tanya's angry because she can't hear the movie. This is a scene from the movie. In this scene, a beautiful young woman's lying across the tracks. She's shouting, help, because a train's coming along the tracks. It's very near. It's coming around the bend now. What's on TV tonight? 
Hi, David. I'm home. Hi. How are you? I'm tired. How about you? I'm tired, too. What time is it? It's quarter to seven. What's on TV tonight? There's a good program on PBS at quarter after nine. Best animated movies of the year. Yes. And there's a great movie on Channel 2 at eight o'clock after 59 minutes. Oh, wait a minute. There's a baseball game on at seven. Oh, I can't watch that. Look, there's ballet on Channel 13. It's beginning now. But, Melissa, it's my favorite team. It's a very important game. It's the World Series. Well, you can watch it on the portable TV in the bedroom. In prison. Tomorrow we're going to leave this place. Yeah. What are you going to do first? Well, I'm going to rent a big car, meet my girlfriend, and take her to an expensive restaurant. We're going to have lobster and caviar. What about you, Fred? My wife's going to meet me outside the prison. Then we're going to visit her mother. Your mother-in-law? You're kidding. No, I'm not. I'm going to work for my wife's mother. Really? You're not going to work for your mother-in-law? Well, she has a little diner in Chicago. What are you going to do there? I'm going to be a dishwasher. What? Wash dishes? Well, I'm not going to work. I'm going to have a good time. You're lucky. I'm going to rob a bank next week. Are you crazy? Why? Because I'm happy here in prison. A wedding. This is an American wedding. The bride and groom are leaving City Hall. The bride is wearing a long white gown and carrying a bouquet of flowers. The groom is wearing a tuxedo and a purple carnation. He's holding her hand. Their friends and relatives are throwing rice. The bride and groom are both smiling because they're very happy. In a few minutes, they're going to get into a white Cadillac and drive to a hotel for the reception. They're going to have dinner, and the bride and groom are going to cut the cake. Some people are going to make speeches, and their parents are going to cry. Then everyone is going to dance. Later on, the bride and groom are going to change their clothes. Then they're going to leave the reception and drive to the airport. They're going to fly to Acapulco in Mexico for their honeymoon. They aren't going to tell anyone the address of their hotel. Computer dating. Hello. Come in, please. Good afternoon. My name's Jensen. Magnus Jensen. I'm, uh, looking for a woman friend. Please, sit down, Mr. Jensen. May I ask you some questions? What about? Well, about music, for example. Do you like music? Yes, I do. I like military band music and classical music. Do you like rock music? No, I don't. And I don't like jazz. Uh-huh. Okay. Food. Do you like foreign food? No, I don't. I like meat and potatoes. Okay. Uh, how old are you, Mr. Jensen? What? Listen here, young man. I don't like these personal questions. Oh, well, um... Can you fill out this form later and mail it to me? A scene from a movie. Please, marry me, Jacqueline. I want you. I need you. I love you. I'm sorry, Lawrence, but I can't. Oh, Jackie, why not? Well, Larry, I like you. I like you a lot, but I don't love you. But, Jackie, love isn't everything. Oh, Larry, you don't understand. For me, love is everything. Do you love another man, Jackie? Yes, Larry, I do. Not... Michael Kennedy? Yes, Michael Kennedy. But he doesn't want you. He's engaged. I know. But, Jackie, Mike isn't a rich man. I can give you everything. What do you want? Clothes? Money? Travel? A house in Palm Beach? No, Larry. I don't want those things. I only want... Mike. Asking for assistance. Excuse me. Yes? Do you have any change? What do you need? I need some quarters. Sure. How many do you want? Can you change a dollar bill? Yes, I think so. Here are four quarters.
Hello. Hello. How can I help you? Could you repair these boots? Sure. What's the problem? They need new heels. No problem. When do you need them? As soon as possible. Is Thursday afternoon okay? Yes, that's great. Excuse me? Yes? Is there a parking lot near here? Yes, there is. Is it far? No, it's not. Turn right at the first traffic light. It's on the left. Thank you. You're welcome. An interview. Arnold Rivera, the TV news reporter, is interviewing Mrs. Cornelia Vandergilt for the program Real People. Well, Mrs. Vandergilt, please tell our viewers about an ordinary day in your life. Well, I wake up at 8 o'clock. Really? Do you get up then? No, of course I don't get up at that time. I have breakfast in bed and I read the New York Times. What time do you get up? I get up at 10. What do you do then? I read my letters and dictate the answers to my secretary. And then? At 11, I take a walk with Jimmy. Jimmy? Who's Jimmy? Jimmy's my dog. Oh. What time do you have lunch? I have lunch at 12.30. I eat alone. Oh, I see. Well, what do you do after lunch? I rest until 6 o'clock. And at 6, what do you do at 6? I get dressed for dinner. I have dinner at 7 o'clock. Yes. Well, what do you do after dinner? I read or watch TV. I take a bath at 9.30 and I go to bed at 10. You certainly have a busy and interesting life, Mrs. Vandergilt. Thank you. You're welcome. Every day. Max, a truck driver. He's 25 years old. He works five days a week. He gets up at six o'clock every day. He eats an enormous breakfast. He drinks two cups of coffee. Then he kisses his wife goodbye. He leaves for work at 6.30. He has lunch at a hamburger place. He comes home at 5 o'clock. He has dinner and watches TV. He goes to bed at 10 o'clock. What's my job? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Job? We have three famous people here. Dr. K. Walter Eisenstein, the scientist, Benita Moreno, the movie star, and Rude E. Mallet, the rock star. They're going to ask the questions. Now, here's our first contestant. Okay, Dr. Eisenstein. Um, do you work outside? No, I don't. I see. Do you work in an office? Well, yes. Yes, I do. Do you wear a uniform? No, I don't. Next, Benita Moreno. Oh, is your job important? Yes, it is. Do you get a big salary? Yes, I do. Do you have any special diplomas? Yes, I do. Thank you, Benita. Now, Rude E. Mallet. What's happening? Do you work with your hands? Yes, I do. Do you work on weekends? No, I don't. Do you travel in your work? No, I don't. That's the ninth question. Now you can ask one last question. Are you a doctor? No, I'm not. I'm a dentist. Karaoke. Lemon Computers Incorporated always has an end-of-the-year party for its workers. They usually have dinner and then they dance. This year, they're doing something different. They're having a karaoke party. Come on, Brittany, sing us a song. No way. Why not? I never sing in public. But you can sing. Well, I often sing in the car, but that's different. I'm on my own then. Only in the car? Well, I occasionally sing in the shower, but everybody sometimes sings in the shower. Well, there you go. You can sing. Travis, I really don't want to. What's your favorite song? I don't know. I hardly ever listen to rock music. I usually listen to opera. They don't have opera, Brittany. You know that. Come on, think of a song. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, our next singer is Brittany Young from the sales division. You always ask me questions. I never tell you. Nothing. A questionnaire. 
Arthur McNair works for a market research company in San Francisco. He's asking people about their free time. Excuse me, ma'am? Yes? I'm from Market Research Incorporated. May I ask you some questions? Uh, yes. All right. Thank you. First, what time do you usually get home from work? Um, I usually get home about 6 o'clock. When do you usually have dinner? I usually eat about 7, but I sometimes eat at 8 or 9. My husband works too. What do you usually do after dinner? Well, I sometimes go out, but I usually stay home and read or watch TV. How often do you go out? Oh, not often. About once or twice a week. Do you often see your friends? Yes, I do. Pretty often. I sometimes visit them, and they sometimes visit me. Do you ever go to the movies? Oh, yes. How often? Well, occasionally. I like horror movies, Frankenstein or Dracula. What about the theater? Do you ever go to the theater? Yes, I do, but not often. In fact, I hardly ever go to the theater. Do you ever go to the ballet? No, never. I don't like ballet. Well, thank you, Ms. Ross. May I ask you a question? Yes. What do you do in your spare time? I ask questions, Ms. Ross. I never answer them. Oh. What do they do every day? Hello, uh, my name's Chuck Seeger. I'm a pilot for Global Airlines. I fly 747s. I'm not working today, I'm playing golf. It's my favorite sport. This woman's a violinist. Her name's Michiko. She plays the violin in the Boston Symphony Orchestra. She isn't playing the violin right now. She's dancing with her boyfriend. This is a picture of Joan and Dave. They teach English at a language school in San Francisco. They aren't teaching right now. They're in a restaurant. They're talking about their students. This is Cynthia Graham. She dances for the New York City Ballet. She isn't dancing right now. She's taking a bath in her hotel room. Later, she's going to dance at the White House for the President and his guests. Well or badly? There's a baseball game on TV today. The New York Rebels are playing the Chicago Blue Sox. They are both good teams. They usually play well. But today, the Rebels are playing very well, and the Blue Sox are playing badly. William Zanziger often has accidents. This is his fourth accident this year. He's a bad driver because he's a fast and careless driver. He drives fast, carelessly, and badly. John Gonzalez is an excellent driver. He always drives slowly, carefully, and well. All his friends say John's a good driver. He's very careful. Susan Yamakawa works very hard. She's a fast worker. Her boss often says, Ms. Yamakawa works hard eight hours a day. She's a hard worker and a good employee. Leisure time. What are you doing this weekend? I'm going out of town. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to Cape Cod. For how long? Just for two days. Would you like to come to a party? Well, uh, I'd like to. When is it? Saturday night. Oh, sorry. I'm busy on Saturday. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing my homework. Your homework? That's right. Well, maybe some other time. Right. Uh, thanks anyway. Would you like to dance? Okay. Do you come here often? Sometimes. Do you live near here? No, I don't. Where do you work? In a bank. Do you like it? It's okay. Lost in Niagara Falls. Excuse me, I'm looking for the Skyline Tower. Pardon me? I'm looking for the Skyline Tower. It's right behind you. You're standing right in front of it. Where can I find the boat trip to the falls? Ah, uh, you want the Maid of the Mists Plaza. Walk along this street. It's the Niagara Parkway. Stay near the river. The road goes around to the right. 
the entrance to the boat trips is just around the bend on your right. You can't miss it. Sorry, could you repeat that? Pardon me, how do I get to the United States? Just go straight ahead. Go across the Rainbow Bridge and you're there. This side's Canada, that side's the USA. Which are the Canadian Falls? They're on our right. The Horseshoe Falls is another name for the Canadian Falls. So the American Falls are across the river on our left. That's correct. Personal Information AMC Movie Theater, how can I help you? I'd like two tickets for Aladdin, please. For when? Saturday at 4 o'clock. December 26th, 4 o'clock. That's $9. How would you like to pay? Visa. Card number 9999-8160-2222. Four five three eight. And what's your name? Lee. William Lee. And the expiration date on the card? July of next year. Are you a student here? Yes. It's my first day. What are you studying? ESL. Oh, where are you from? Sao Paulo in Brazil. Are you a student in Brazil? No, I'm not. I work for an airline. Oh, really? Which one? Varig. Do you know it? Hello, I'd like a membership card for the Recreation Center. The center is for the Brentwood area only. Yes, I know. Do you live, work, or go to school in the area? I go to school here. Do you have a student ID? It's right here. I'm a student at Brentwood College. Okay. Can you complete this form? I also need a passport photograph and $20. Is there a student discount? Yes. There's a discount of 25%. $20 is the discount price. Where were you? Princess Amelia of Sylvania is on a skiing trip to Aspen, Colorado. Princess Amelia employs three security guards. They're outside her hotel now. They're talking to a photographer. The princess has a lot of problems with photographers. Okay, don't move. What's your name, bud? Hanson. Johnston Hanson. I work for the National Questioner. Right. You were here yesterday. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. You were here yesterday afternoon. I wasn't. I was in Denver yesterday. Yeah? What about Saturday? Where were you on Saturday? Uh, what time? Two o'clock. Where were you at two o'clock? Uh, I was here, on the ski slope. Right. And where were you on January 12th? I can't remember. It was a Wednesday. Oh, really? No, I can't remember. I can. You were in New York, outside Princess Amelia's Hotel. And where were you at seven o'clock this evening? I'm not answering any more questions. Yes, you are, bud. You were outside the swimming pool with your camera, and the princess was in the pool. Okay, but there wasn't any film in my camera. Yeah, right. Okay, open your camera. Vacations. Hi, Joe. Where were you last month? Oh, uh, hi, Diane. I was on vacation. Really? You were on vacation in January. Yes, I was in Colorado in January. Where were you last month? I was in Florida. Florida? What was it like? Fantastic. The weather was beautiful and the ocean was very warm. What was the hotel like? Excellent. There was a swimming pool and a private beach. And there were three restaurants. What were the people like? They were very friendly. Was Suzanne with you? Yes. She loves the sun. What about your children? Were they with you? No. They weren't. They were with their grandparents in Chicago. Return from space. Phil Strongarm, the astronaut, is talking about his journey to the moon. Opal Winford, the TV personality, is interviewing Phil. Well, Phil, welcome back to Earth. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Winford, I mean, Opal. Did you have any problems on the trip into space? We didn't have any serious problems, but it certainly wasn't a picnic. What do you mean? We didn't have a bath or a shave for two weeks. Oh, really? Yes, it, it wasn't very comfortable. What about food? Was that a problem? Well, we didn't have any normal food. What did you have? We had some, some food tablets and other kinds of food in tubes. Are you going to the moon again, Phil? I hope so, uh, Opal. 
It was uncomfortable and difficult, but it was wonderful. Did you get everything? Ron Carter goes downtown every Saturday. He went downtown last Saturday. He usually plays pool with his friends. He played pool last Saturday afternoon. After he leaves the pool hall, he usually goes to the supermarket and gets the food for the week. He got the food last Saturday. He usually comes home by bus. But last Saturday, he came home by taxi. Ron, is that you? Yes, Sue, I'm back. Did you come home by taxi? Yes, I did. The bags were very heavy. Did you get everything? Yes, I got, well, almost everything. Almost everything? Well, I went to the butcher, but they didn't have any steak. They didn't have any steak? No, so I got some hamburgers. <sighs> did you go to the bakery? Yes, but I didn't get any bread. You didn't get any bread? Well, no, they didn't have any bread, but they had some rolls, so I got some rolls. How many rolls did you get? Uh, I can't remember. Ron? Yes? What time did you go to the store? Uh, I went at five o'clock. The shelves were empty. In the office. Hello, Gloria. Hi, Jane. Did you enjoy lunch? Yes, I did. Did you finish those reports? Yes, I typed them. They're on your desk. Did you photocopy them? Yes, I photocopied everything. And I mailed the letters, too. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Mr. Thompson was here. Mr. Thompson? Did he call for an appointment first? No, he didn't. What time did he arrive? About two o'clock. But he only waited about five minutes. That's strange. What did he want? He probably wanted some free advice. Did anybody telephone? No, nobody. Oh, no. What's the matter? You mailed the letters? Yes, of course. But I didn't sign them. I signed them with my name. Phew. Thank you, Gloria. That was great. The Legend of Willie the Kid Willie the Kid arrived in Dodge City one evening. He walked into the saloon and looked slowly around the room. Everybody was afraid. Willie had two guns. The sheriff was in his office. He was asleep. The barkeeper rushed into the sheriff's office. Willie the Kid's in town. The sheriff hurried to the saloon. Give me your guns, Willie. The sheriff shouted to Willie. This town is too small for both of us. Willie replied calmly. They walked into the street. The sheriff waited. Willie moved his hand toward his gun. The sheriff pulled out his gun. He fired twice. The first bullet missed Willie. The second killed him. Two cowboys carried Willie away. That was the end of Willie the Kid. Foreign Vacations Maria is a student at Yale University. She studies Spanish, and she goes to Mexico every summer. She sees interesting places, lies in the sun, and eats a lot of Mexican food. She always flies to Mexico with Aero Mexico. Professor Hopkins teaches Spanish at Yale University. He's Maria's teacher. He went to India last summer. He saw the Taj Mahal and rode on an elephant. He wrote postcards to all his friends. He flew with Air India. Maria's parents went to Italy last year. They toured the country by bus. They saw a lot of interesting places. They ate spaghetti in Rome, drank coffee in Venice, and took a lot of photographs. The sun shone every day. They flew to Italy with Alitalia. Paolo's from Brazil. He traveled around the United States last summer. He stayed there for a month. Of course, he ate hamburgers and drank Coca-Cola. He met a lot of interesting people. He bought a lot of souvenirs and took them back to Brazil. He flew there with Varig. Survivors. Bill Craig and Chris Alonso are test pilots. Last year, their plane crashed in the Pacific Ocean. They were in a rubber lifeboat for four weeks. They didn't have much water, and they didn't have many things to eat. They had a few bananas, 
and a little apple juice from their plane. They caught a lot of fish. They had only a little chocolate. They had only a few crackers and a few apples. They lost a lot of weight. After four weeks, they were lucky. They saw a ship and it rescued them. They wrote a book about their experience. It's called Survivors. Fifth Avenue. Misha Botnick is the director of Fifth Avenue. It's the morning after the first performance. He's speaking to the performers. Well, guys, I worked hard. You worked hard. We all worked hard. What happened last night? You were terrible. The show was terrible. Whitney. Yes, Mr. Botnick? Look, Whitney, you're a good singer. You usually sing well. Thank you, Mr. Botnick. But last night you sang badly, Whitney. What happened? I don't know, Mr. Botnick. I sang the last song well. I sang the last song well. You forgot the words, Whitney. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Jason? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Botnick. Jason, you're famous. You're a great dancer. I saw you dance in Boston. You danced very well. You're the star of this show. I'm sorry about last night, Mr. Botnick. I had one or two problems. One or two? First you lost your shoe. Then you danced badly in the love scene. I only had one shoe, Mr. Botnick. And finally, Jason, finally, you fell into the orchestra pit. Talking about the past. Hi there. I'm David, and I'm your waiter for today. Are you enjoying your vacation? Yes, thanks. Is this your first day in Orlando? No, we came here two days ago. Where are you from? Canada. We're from Toronto. Did you go to a theme park yesterday? Yes. We went to Universal Studios. Did you have a good time? Yes, thank you. Great. Now, what can I get you for breakfast? What did you do last weekend? I went to Tampa. Really? How did you go? I went by car. How long did it take? It took about two hours. Did you have a good time? Yeah, great. Excuse me, I left my glasses here this morning. Where did you leave them? Over there. I was at the table by the window. Well, you're lucky. The waiter found them about an hour ago. Thank goodness. I was really worried. There you go. He gave them to me a few minutes ago. Yes, those are mine. They're new. I lost my last pair. The 6 o'clock news. Good evening. This is the 6 o'clock news from Washington with J.C. Kennedy and Warren Wolf. Last night, there was an earthquake in Mandanga. The earthquake destroyed the central bank. Many buildings fell down. The Mandangan army is in the capital. They are helping survivors. The Red Cross sent planes with food and medicine to the area this morning. The Virginia police are looking for two climbers in the Blue Ridge Mountains. The climbers left yesterday morning to climb Mount Blue. It began to snow heavily yesterday afternoon. The police sent out a search party last night. They spent the night on the mountain, but they didn't find the climbers. Yesterday, Washington, D.C. Mayor Nancy Burns opened a new rehabilitation center in the D.C. hospital. She met all the doctors and nurses and spoke to the first patients. Mrs. Burns does a lot of work with the disabled. And that's the news for tonight. Now over to Jasmine Gonzalez for the weather report. Dinner with a star. Harriet Dormer won a magazine contest. The prize was dinner in Hollywood with a movie star. She's having dinner with Kevin Costley, the actor. Why, Mr. Costley, this is a change. I don't usually eat in restaurants, you know. Well, you're eating in a restaurant tonight. Do you like it? Oh, yes, Mr. Costley. It's wonderful. Please don't call me Mr. Costley. My friends always call me Kevin. All right, Kevin. And we're having filet mignon. I normally have franks and beans on Mondays. You see, my husband doesn't like restaurants. Uh, tell me about your husband. What's he doing now? He's just over there. He's recording a video for me. Could you wave to him, Mr. Co I mean, Kevin? Sure. What's his name? 
Andrew. <coughs> Hello there, Andy. Good to see you. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you. Would you like a drink? Champagne, maybe. Oh, I never drink alcohol. A diet soda, please. Fine. I'd like a diet soda, too. I'm filming tonight. Uh, Kevin, can I ask you a question? Sure, Harriet. Well, it's very difficult. Go ahead, ask me. Well, I read some stories in the National Questioner about you, and you're my favorite actor and all, and I just wanted to ask you... <laughs> yes? Well... Is that really your hair or is it a wig? Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't very polite. That's okay. It's all mine. You can try it. Give it a good pull. Oh! Yes, it's yours. I'm very sorry. An accident. Two cars were going down 2nd Street in Lawrence, Kansas. A middle-aged woman was driving a Chevrolet. Right behind her, a teenage student was driving an old Ford. The woman was driving slowly and carefully. The student wasn't driving carefully. He was worrying about his classes in school. He was doing badly in Spanish and physics. He was worrying about the final exams, so he wasn't paying attention to the road. The traffic light was green. A young woman was walking down the street. A cat was sitting on the corner near the traffic light. A dog was sitting on the opposite corner. An investigation. Last night at 9.18 p.m., Mr. Scott Shaw, a high school principal, was walking from his office to his car when he was attacked from behind. The attacker hit the principal on the head. The police think the attacker was a student. They are going to question every student in the school, both male and female. A police officer questioned the victim at the hospital last night. What can you remember about the attack, Mr. Shaw? Well, I was working late last night. What time did you leave your office? At about a quarter after nine. Are you sure? Yes, I am. I looked at my watch. What did you do then? Well, I locked the office door and I was walking to the parking lot when somebody hit me on the head. Did you see the attacker? No, he was wearing a mask over his face. He? Oh, so it was a man. Well, I'm not really sure. No, no, I don't know. Tell me, Mr. Shaw, how'd you break your leg? Well, when they were putting me into the ambulance, they dropped me. Pictures from the past. Josh is visiting his mother. He's with his new girlfriend, Rosa. That's a nice picture of Josh, Mrs. Ryan. Did you take it? Yes, photography's my hobby. I have a lot of pictures of Josh. Oh, really? May I see some? Why, yes, there's an album here. Oh, no, Mom, not the photographs, please. Shh, I want to see them. Oh, wow. Look, Josh could sit up when he was six months old. That's really cute. And he could talk when he was a year. Look. This is awful. Please, Mom. Be quiet, Joshua. When he was three, he could swim. Really? I couldn't swim until I was five or six. This is a picture on the beach. Mom, I'm not wearing any clothes in that picture. Miami Police Squad. This is a very important job, Dwayne. Right, boss. What do I have to do? You have to fly to Bermuda tonight. Bermuda, huh? I have a girlfriend there. I know that, but you can't visit her. Sure, boss. Well, where do I have to stay? You have to go to the Palm Tree Hotel, stay in your room and wait for Eric. Eric has the Picasso painting. Which passport do I have to use? The British one. And don't forget, you have to speak with a British accent. They can't discover your real nationality. Okay. Do I have to drink tea? Yes, you do. Oh, no, boss. I hate tea. Okay, Carmen, we have to get that painting. Here's the plan. Go to the Palm Tree Hotel. Do I have to reserve a room? No, you don't. We reserved a room for you, next to Dwayne Skinner's room. Do I have to stay in the room? No, you don't. But you have to watch Skinner all the time. You have to find that painting. Mm -hmm. Do I have to contact you every day? No, you can't. It's too dangerous for you. Why? Because Dwayne Skinner's a very dangerous guy. Okay. Is that everything? Oh, and you have to speak with a British accent. He can't discover that you're an American police officer. Telephoning. Hello? Hello, is it Kiko Nakamura there? Who's calling, please? Travis Bergman. 
at all. Thanks. Uh, hello. I'm sorry, but Akiko's out. Oh. Uh, when do you expect her back? I'm not sure. Could you take a message? Yes, of course. 9X, what city? San Diego. That's area code 619. Please dial 619-555-1212 for directory assistance in that area. Pacific Bell, what name and city? Gonzalez, 1854 Camellia Drive, San Diego. The number is area code 619-451-0111. Hotel operator. Hello. Can I call direct to Rio de Janeiro from my room? Yes. First press 9 for an external line. Wait for a tone. Then press the international access number 011. Okay. What next? Then press the country code. 55 for Brazil. And the area code. Right. Rio's 21, I think. That's correct. Then just press the local number. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. On the moon. The eagle has landed on the moon. Astronaut Phil Strongarm is speaking to Mission Control in Houston. Hello, Phil. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. What are you going to do next? I'm going to open the door. Hello, Phil. What are you doing now? I'm opening the door. Phil, have you opened the door? Yes, I've opened it. I can see the moon, and it's fantastic. Where's it gone? Okay, which way's the car? It's in space 34. It's this way. I can't see it. No, Kelly. It's gone. Are you sure? Yes, it was in space 34. It isn't there now. It's gone, Kelly. It really has gone. This is terrible. It's only two months old. Come on. Where's it gone? This is a high security parking garage. You can't get out without the ticket. And you have the ticket. But Space 34 is empty. And it's the right number. I wrote it on the ticket. Let me see. Oh, Mark, it hasn't gone. We're on the wrong floor. Look, this is floor C. The car's on floor D. Hey, Bill, can you lend me $10? Sorry, I can't. I haven't been to the bank today. Um, I haven't been there either. And I need some money. We could go now. No, the bank's closed. It's too late. Why don't you ask Pete? Has he been to the bank? Yes, he has. He always goes to the bank on Mondays. What have you done? Oh, no. What's wrong? I can't find my pen. Really? <laughs> it isn't funny. Oh, yes, it is. It is? I don't understand. Well, you have to look carefully. I've looked everywhere. No, you haven't. Look behind your ear. Oh, Watch out, I've just washed the floor. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Well, you haven't done a very good job. Look over there. You've missed a spot. You're right. Here's the mop. I'm so bored. Well, do something. What, for example? Wash your hair. I've already washed it. Call your friend, Susan. I've already talked to her today. Clean your room. I've already cleaned it. Then do the dishes. Haven't you done them yet? No, I haven't. Oh, all right. City and country. Jeff, I've got a new job. I'm going to live in New York. You are? I lived in New York five years ago. Did you like it? Not very much. Why not? Well, there were too many people, and there was too much noise. I love crowds and noise. Well, I don't, and I don't like pollution. What do you mean? There isn't enough fresh air in New York. But you can go to concerts and the ballet and Broadway and... I never had enough money for all that. The rents are very high. Why is that? Because there aren't enough apartments. Well, I still prefer big cities. But why? I was born in a small town. It was too quiet and too dull. You were lucky. I don't think so. There wasn't much to do. That's why young people go to New York. But New York's too expensive for young people. They still go. They want excitement. Well, I don't want excitement. I just want a quiet life. That's all. Europa Tours. Elmer Colt is from Kansas. He's on a 14-day tour of Europe. 
the tour started in London. At the moment, he's in Prague. It's the eighth day of the tour. He's already been to seven countries and stayed in the principal cities. He's never been to Europe before, and he's already seen a lot of new places. He's done a lot of interesting things, and the tour hasn't finished yet. Elmer calls home. Hello, Mom. Is that you? Oh, Elmer, yes. How are you? Where are you now? I'm fine. I've just arrived in Prague, Mom. You haven't sent us any postcards yet? Yes, I have. I've sent one from every city. Have you been to Paris yet, Elmer? Yes, I have. Have you been to Vienna yet? No, I haven't. We're going to Vienna tomorrow. Elmer, are you still there? Yes, Mom. How many countries have you seen now? Well, this is the eighth day, so I've already seen eight countries. Have you spent much money? Well, uh, yes, Mom. I've bought a lot of souvenirs, and I want to buy some more. Can you send me a thousand dollars? All right, Elmer. Elmer, are you listening to me? Sure, Mom. Have you taken many pictures, Elmer? Yes, I've taken a lot. I've used three rolls of film. Have you met any nice girls yet? Oh, yes, Mom. There's a girl from Texas on the tour. We've done everything together. Elmer? Elmer? Are you still there? Have you ever... Have you ever studied a language before? Yes, I have. Oh, which one did you study? I studied Spanish in high school. Have you ever been to a big wedding? Yes, I have. Whose wedding was it? It was my brother's. Have you ever seen a fire? Uh, yes, I have. When did you see it? I saw a bad fire in Detroit in 1992. Have you ever eaten sushi? Yes, I have. Where did you eat it? Maria and I ate sushi in Hawaii last year. Have you ever had the flu? Yes, I have. And when did you have it? I had it last winter. Have you ever broken a bone? Yes, I have. What did you break? I broke my leg. Dr. Finkel's invention. Dr. Finkel is an inventor. He has just designed a new machine. The machine can change people. His assistant, Boris, is going to try the machine for the first time. Is it safe, Doctor? Oh, yes. Yes, of course it is, Boris. Uh, I'm afraid, Doctor. Nonsense. This machine is going to change you. You're going to be a better person, Boris. Stronger, uh, thinner, healthier, happier. Uh, I'm happy now, Doctor. Well, you're going to be happier and more intelligent. Uh, I'm intelligent now, Doctor. Uh, yes, well, you're less intelligent than I am, Boris. Just get into the machine. But, Doctor! Whoa! 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 Hmm. Yes, and younger, too. Sorry about that, Potter. Mommy! I want my mommy! <laughs> A hard life. Jerry Floyd is talking to his grandfather about his new job. It's terrible, Grandpa. I have to get up at 7 o'clock because I have to catch the bus to work. Because I'm new, I have to make the coffee at work. I have to work hard during the week. I'm only happy on weekends. I don't have to work then. His grandfather isn't very sympathetic. I had to start work when I was 14. I lived in West Virginia, and there wasn't much work. I had to work in the coal mines. We had to work 12 hours a day. We didn't have to work on Sundays, but we had to work the other six days of the week. When I was 18, World War II started. I joined the Army. I had to wear a uniform, and I had to go to Europe. We had to obey the officers. A lot of my friends died. When I was 60, I had to go into the hospital because of the dust from the mines. 
It was the only quiet time in my life. I didn't have to work, and I didn't have to earn money. I retired when I was 65. Nowadays, I don't work, and I don't have to get up early. But I have to live on my pension. Life is still difficult. So, Jerry, I don't feel sorry for you. The Trivia Game Okay, it's my turn. Three. One, two, three. I'm on blue. Blue. That's geography. What's the biggest country in the world? Uh, Canada. No, Russia's bigger than Canada. It's the biggest country in the world. That's not right. In my geography book, the USSR was the biggest. But Russia is smaller than the USSR. It doesn't matter, Candace. Russia is smaller than the USSR, but it's still bigger than Canada. Your turn, Megan. Okay. Six. What's that? Nature. What is the most intelligent animal in the world? That's easy. Humans are the most intelligent. No. What do you mean, no? The answer on the card is whales. Whales have the biggest brains. But that's not the same thing. That's the answer on the card. Okay, it's my turn. CN Tower Jody and Adam are on vacation in Toronto. They're visiting the CN Tower. Did you get the tickets? Yes, they're here. Where's the line for the elevators? It's this way. Are you okay, Adam? Uh, yes. It's just, well, I don't like heights, that's all. Uh, I feel dizzy. The view's better over here, Adam. You can see farther. <laughs> don't go too near the window. Come on! You can see the city better from here. What's that down there? It's an airplane. It's landing at the airport. But it's below us. Can we go up to the space deck? That's the highest level. It's 33 stories higher than this one. What? Do we have to? It's the highest public observation gallery in the world. We have to see it. Uh, <clears throat> all right. This is fantastic. It's the most exciting place I've ever been to. Think about it, Adam. We're on the tallest building in the world. I am thinking about it. Come over here. This is the best view. You can see Niagara Falls, and it's a hundred miles away. Oh, sorry. Are you okay? Oh, not really. <laughs> I feel worse. Ah, we're on the ground again. Whoa. Well, I feel better already. Thanks for coming up with me. Oh, that's okay, Jody. Do you know something? I'm not going to be afraid of heights again. <laughs> I'll do it. Come in. Sir? Who are you? My name's Withers, sir. I'm your new personal assistant. Where's Mrs. Sherman? I want my coffee. I'll get it, sir. There you go, sir. Thank you, Smithers. Uh, it's Withers, sir. It's hot in here. Will you open the window, please? Yes, sir. I'll get you a glass of iced water, too. Good. Please be quick. Will you bring me the suggestions box, Zithers? Of course I will, sir. Uh, where is it? In the cafeteria. People can put suggestions about the company in it. I'll get it right away. All right, Blithers, let's see it. There are a lot of suggestions, sir. Well, let's hear them. Yes, sir. This is the first one. Why doesn't Burnett speak politely to people? Next. Why don't the bosses remember our names? And another. Why don't we begin work at 11 a.m.? Old Burnett does. And another. Old Burnett, eh? Who wrote the suggestions? Did they sign them? Uh, no, sir. Find their names, Zithers. I will, sir. And don't tell anybody about the suggestions. I won't, sir. Comparing things. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go down for breakfast. I like your room. It's the same as yours. No, it isn't. It's different from mine. Is it? Yes, it is. It's bigger, and it has a better view. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you. Good to see you, Sam. Are you staying here? No, I'm at the Ambassador. It's down the street. How is it? Well, it isn't as modern as this hotel, but it's very comfortable. How long have you been at this conference? 
As long as you have. Two days. That's funny. I haven't seen you before. Really? I saw you in the coffee shop. I waved, but you didn't see me. Did you enjoy that presentation? Not really. Did you? No. I've heard a lot of boring speakers before, but he's the most boring speaker I've ever heard. <laughs> Are you going to the next presentation? No. Are you? No, I'm not. Let's go and have a cup of coffee. Something, nothing, anything, everything. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? I want some seats for Tuesday night. Are there any left? No, I'm very sorry. There are no seats left. Every seat is reserved. Doctor, I think there's something in my eye. Let me have a look. Everything looks funny and it hurts. I can't see anything. No, I'm sure there's nothing there. There's somebody in the other office. I didn't hear anybody. Take a look, please. Okay. No, there's nobody there. Everybody's gone home. What are you looking for? My pen. It's somewhere in this room. Have you looked everywhere? Yes, but I can't find it anywhere. Four Lives Herbert Burke, James Brody, Gina Rossi, and Charles Phillips all went to the same school. They finished elementary school in 1978 and high school in 1984. They've had very different careers. Herbie Burke became a politician four years ago. He's very successful. He bought a country house three years ago and bought a Jaguar at the same time. He's been a congressman for four years. Jimmy Brody was very lucky. He won a lottery in 1991 and moved to a Pacific Island. He bought a luxury yacht the next year. He's still on the island. He's been there since 1991. He's had his yacht since 1992. Gina Rossi and Charlie Phillips fell in love at school. He gave her a ring when they finished high school. She wears it every day and she's never taken it off. They got married in 1988 and they're still in love. They moved to Arizona in 1993. An electronic world? Pardon me, sir. Is everything here yours? Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, sir. You can't use any electronic equipment during takeoff and landing. Why not? It's an airline regulation, sir. You can use the CD player during the flight, but I'm afraid you can't use the laptop computer or the portable phone or the portable TV. But I have to use my computer. I need it. I'm very sorry. But I can't live without it. What am I going to do for two hours? You can read, sir. Read? But I don't have any books. I'll get you a magazine, sir. Battle of the Bands. This is the National Battle of the Bands contest. All of the bands have played, and in a moment, we're going to hear the result of the contest. The two finalists are Dixie Chickens and Technocrat. All of the members of Technocrat are from Philadelphia. They're on the left. All of them are wearing black suits and silver shirts. All of the members of Dixie Chickens are from Atlanta, Georgia. None of them are wearing suits. The announcer is Tina Rivera. She's standing with one of the members of Dixie Chickens and one of the members of Technocrat. Both of them are guitarists. Neither of them has been on TV before. Both of them are nervous, and neither of them is smiling. Now the judges have voted, and Tina has announced the result. Dixie Chickens have won the contest. All of them are smiling. The members of Technocrat aren't happy. None of them are smiling. Some of the people in the audience are cheering, but some of them are booing. Some of them preferred Dixie Chickens, but some of them preferred Technocrat. The prizes are great. Both of the bands are going to get record contracts. Special Occasions Can I help you? Yes. I want to send some flowers to my mother in Chicago. What kind of flowers would you like? Well, what do you recommend? Roses are very nice at this time of year. Okay. A dozen pink roses, please. Would you like to include a message? Yes. Just say, Happy Birthday, Mom. Love, Cindy. Mrs. Martinez? Yes, Paul. This is a present for you. A present for me? 
What a nice surprise. Can I open it now? Yes, of course. Oh, candy. I love candy. Thank you very, very much, Paul. Thank you, Mrs. Martinez. You've been very kind to me. It's been a wonderful party. Thank you very much. But you can't go yet. The party's just beginning. I'm sorry, but I really have to. I have to catch the last train. Don't be silly. I'll give you a ride. Where are you going? <laughs> Montreal. Oh, well, thanks for coming. And thanks for the present. You're very welcome. I'll see you soon. See ya.